So good afternoon. Um, so today I'm going to talk about work-life balance. And work-life balance is not a concept. It's a career choice. But do you know what work-life balance means? It is the division of one's time and focus between working and family and uh, leisure activities. Quite often when people hear work-life balance, they think of women, mothers, that want to combine working with being home with their children. True, but they also want to work. But what they find is that their job actually doesn't offer the flexibility that they're looking for. So they end up leaving the workforce, wanting to return a few years later, but actually, as I said before, not finding the flexibility um, they need. But it's not only women, it's so much more. So fathers, men, are also looking for flexibility. And then looking at millennials and Generation Z, they want to work remotely, and they also want to even have more work-life balance. So change needs to happen. The first example that I'm going to give you is a personal one. I think uh, Serena started with sort of giving a brief introduction to who I am and uh, my background. But when I, um, so when I, before I had my daughter, uh, I was working full time and uh, I was working more than the 40 hours a week. Uh, and to, in order to actually enjoy life outside work, I used to go out, to see my friends, or I used to go to the gym to stay fit because I spent most of my time behind a computer. Did I ha actually have to be in the office to do my job? No, I could do my job from anywhere. Technology allows me to work from anywhere. But my employer wanted me to be in the office and wanted all the employees to be in the office from 9.30 till 6.30 on a daily basis. So change is something which is difficult. People have difficulties with change. And that's why I decided then when my daughter was born, I asked for more flexibility. So I asked, can I come in early, leave early? Can I maybe work from home a day a week? But that did not work out. So I decided to set up my own business and that allowed me to work flexibly. It allowed me to arrange my own schedule and have more time for my family, my friends, and for myself. And it gave me more job satisfaction as well. So when we look at dual income families, dual income families, the number of dual income families has doubled over the past 40 years. When we look at Generation X, so people that were born in the 60s and 70s, they are used or more used, we'll say, to having women at home looking after the house and looking after the family. Looking after family can be children, it can be parents, it can be grandparents. But when we look at what's happening nowadays, those tasks are being split. It's quite often that within the couple, the husband and wife, will be sharing those tasks and responsibilities. And that also means that men and fathers are seeking for more flexibility within their jobs. I'm not going to say that that's the only reason, but it is one of the reasons why they're looking for more flexibility. So technology, as I mentioned before, it's, it's everywhere. We have the mobile phones. Some people have two or even more. And then we have the internet, emails. We have social media. It literally enables us to work and connect from anywhere and everywhere. Then we look at millennials and Generation Z. They are great examples of what's, what I have been talking about, so flexibility technology. 75% uh, of millennials want the opportunity to work remotely. That comes from uh, the 2016 Deloitte uh, survey. What does that mean? They, they see it as if they can work remotely, it means that they will have better job satisfaction and it will boost their productivity. Um, quite often we hear people say, yes, millennials, they're not, um, they're not ambitious. No, that's not true. They're actually very ambitious and they want to get up the career ladder a lot faster than previous generations, but they want it to be based on skill rather than on seniority and years of service. So more um, research has been done um, and 
has been proven that actually millennials have been the uh, most educated generation to date. Um, so what does that mean for employers? How do they act? How do they react to this? Let me start by saying that it's a long and a very slow process. But change is happening, and they are reacting to it. So when we first look at startups, startups have actually been great employers because they're offering better work-life balance. And they put in place the technology needed to be flexible. And that technology will um, enable them to actually hire people on a flexible basis. They can work remotely, and it allows uh, people to return to the workforce, as well as millennials and uh, fresh graduates to actually start a career. Um, for the employees, in return, sometimes that will mean that they have to take a salary cut, because startups don't have the big budgets as the large corporates do. But at the same time, they do allow them to work remotely and more flexibly. When we look at then the SMEs and the, the larger corporations in Hong Kong or everywhere, some are adapting quite quickly, whilst others um, are stuck in the tradi traditional way of, of doing business. So on a daily basis, I work with the innovators, I work with the early adopters, I also work with the followers, and they are so the startups, the SMEs, as well as the large corporations. Um, employers do react to this because they feel that they need to. They want to uh, attract and retain the talent that they have, and they also want to guarantee the future of their success. So what are they doing? They are putting in place new policies, new strategies to keep their talent and to attract talent. Some companies, mainly startups as well as SMEs, are looking at flexible resources. What, what does that mean, flexible resources? Flexible resources uh, can be women, mothers, wanting to return to the workforce. As SMEs and startups quite often don't have the large budgets, they look at um, hiring people on a part-time basis or on a project basis because that allows them to get senior people to come into the business, help them grow their business, but without having to pay them the the, the salaries of uh, the large corporates. A great example of that was when a few months back I had a, a fintech startup contacting me and they were looking for a CFO, a senior CFO um, that had previous experience within their uh, industry because not actually anyone in the company had a lot of previous industry experience. Within our database and within the network of uh, Fleximums, we had a perfect match. A mom of two who had come to Hong Kong, followed her husband for his career, and she had 15 years of experience in um, finance and accounting, um, and she had been a CFO for a similar company. So perfect match. Um, yes, she had to take a salary cut, but she got the chance to work for a startup part-time and combine that with being at home for her children after when they came back from school. So it was, it was a perfect match. She was accepted for the role. She started, and we were talking. She's like, they're getting a really good deal out of me. I'm actually doing the same work part-time as I would be doing full-time, but more efficiently and at a smaller cost for the company. So it really was a good deal for the company, but she didn't complain because she, she had a lot of flexibility as well. Then when we look at the, the larger corporates, they really want to uh, keep the woman um, that they have in the business because they have been leaving, because, the work, because they can't give them enough flexibility of the work-life balance that they're looking for. So they are making changes. A lot of companies have been looking at their maternity leave policies. They have been looking at their paternity leave policies, as well as adoption policies. In Hong Kong nowadays, the maternity leave policies are 10, uh, 10 weeks, which is quite short. Uh, but companies have been looking at extending that to 16 weeks. Paternity leave in Hong Kong has only been introduced, and it's two days nowadays. Some companies have extended that to a week others to two weeks, because they understand that if they want to keep the talent within their companies, they have to do something about that. 
Other companies have also introduced adoption leave. Just to, if, if we bring that back to actual reality, that means that for women, um, if they choose to breastfeed, then they can do that for longer than the 10 weeks. That also means that they actually can get used to having a new family dimension, a new routine in their life. Because if you think about it, when you join a new company, you do not, I, I often say, I, I don't think in 10 weeks you actually get your, when you join a new company and a new role, you don't actually know your job completely within 10 weeks. It takes longer than that. Well, imagine having a newborn in your family that changes its routine every day. It takes longer than 10 weeks. So, again, companies have been looking at making those changes in their policies. But then, what about flexibility? But because flexibility is really where the problem is laying. So, some companies have introduced flexi time. What does that mean, flexi time? Well, they have found that some people because of their needs, want to start earlier and leave earlier. So some companies allowing people to start between 8 a.m. in the morning and 10, and 10 a.m. in the morning and leave between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. at night, as suits them best. As long as the work is done, there is no reason that this is not possible. Other companies are allowing um, their staff to work from home one day a week. Another great example was a few weeks back, um, I had a mom return to uh, the corporate sector. She had sworn she would never return. She had been a freelancer for many years because of the lack of uh, work-life balance that they were offering. But that employer was offering to work one day a week from home, so four days in the office. She was getting an extra day off for her birthday, plus two days just for family events. No questions asked. It could be... Um, a child's birthday, it could be a family event, who knows? It was just two days you could take, no questions asked. She seemed interested in the role, so she applied and she got the role just because she had had so many years of experience as a freelancer working with different companies and it was, again, it was a perfect match. So all these examples show that if you, if you want flexibility, it is, it is there. You just have to ask for it and, and look for it. Because without asking, you won't, you won't get anywhere. And that's why a lot of diversity and inclusion in, has become a, a hot topic within companies. And they have uh, set up focus groups. So focus groups can actually exchange and work closely with the business and tell them what they're looking for, what are their needs, what are their wishes. And as they express them, change is actually happening. And for the millennials amongst you, and I assume there's quite a few, um, it is be, be there and, and, and really ask for that change because you are the employees and as well the actual customers of the future. So you really have to help companies steer in the right direction. So this is sort of an, an overview of how I would describe work-life balance and how it is not a concept, but it is really a career choice. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you find the work-life balance you're looking for. Thank you. <laughs>